Hi, it's Professor Murray, and today I want to talk about project closure. We're at that point in the semester. Let's have a look at types of project closure. First of all, there's a normal project closure. The project finishes, everything's completed, the bills are paid, and we close the project. That's what we always hope will happen when we start a project, but that's not what always happens. Next, there's some projects become perpetual projects. It's not really a project anymore, but it's a process. So at some point you have to decide whether you're still going to treat it as a project or maybe it turns into some kind of process. Maybe an example of that is building houses. So building a house should be considered a project because you, you start at some point, you start digging the ground and at the end you turn the house over to your customer and that's a project. If you're a busy house builder and you're building houses all the time, then it becomes more of a continual process and it's not really a project anymore. The third is canceled projects. So very often projects just, they get canceled for different reasons. And the fourth is sometimes there's a major change in the scope of work. The original project just isn't valid anymore because it's become bigger or smaller than what was originally conceived. Four kinds of projects, but the closeout is very similar in all of them. And some questions that you need to ask are what tasks are required to close the project? So that's not tasks to complete the project, but what needs to be done to close the project? Next is who's responsible for doing those tasks? When will the close down or the closure begin and when will it end? How much time are you going to spend on it? And how will the project be delivered? To who, how will it be delivered? Is it a physical thing that's given to someone? Or is it just a report that gets filed in your office? Why work on a canceled project? It seems like if it's canceled, we should just stop. Why keep working on it? There's a number of things that encourage us to not work on projects once they're stopped. The motivation and the excitement are gone. When you start a new project, it's an exciting time and you want to build whatever you're going to build or do whatever you're going to do. And there's a lot of excitement, but when the project is canceled, that excitement is gone. The second is the sponsor or the customer are typically uninvolved or they're gone or they just don't exist anymore. So there's no clear customer sometimes to a canceled project. Very important one is the money is gone. If the project is canceled, there's just no budget left. So there's no money to work on it. You can't pay your employees with funds that are not coming in. One interesting exception to that is typically government projects are handled very differently than, than in the private sector. With a government project, if it gets canceled, and they often do, then the contractor will put together their, their closing expenses and they'll submit to the government for a final payment on the project. Ironically, sometimes companies make more money on a canceled project than they would on a, a successful project. New priorities demand your time. There's new things to do, especially if you're not getting paid on one and you're going to get paid on the new project. You've got new priorities. And lastly, there's no clear entity to receive your work. So you're going to write a final report. What do you do with it? If there's no customer, who do you give it to? Lots of negative influencers that try to pull your effort away from the project. What's the future of your canceled project? There could be a quick restart. Maybe the, the stop is just a temporary thing and maybe you'll be back in business in a month, a week, you don't know. It, it could restart. Second is the project could be repurposed. If you're building a, a warehouse building and it gets stopped, maybe a, a new owner will buy that property and whatever's been completed and build some other, other type of purpose building. Sometimes there's a long dormant time. Some projects stop nothing happens for many months, even many years, and then they're restarted and it goes back to similar to uh, what the original intent was. 
And of course, sometimes there's a permanent hold. So you, you don't really know the future of a project when it's been canceled. You have all these negative influencers that take your effort away from the project. You have all the uncertainties. You don't know what's going to happen with this project, but there's value to the closeout. Let's take a look at them. First is somehow you have to resolve open issues and questions. We're halfway through the project. What do we do with these materials that we've acquired? Or where do we send our people? Do we still need them or do we send them off to a new job? So all those open issues have to somehow be closed. For example, if you have a crew of people and your project stops, if you don't send those people to a new job or a new location, they're going to be unhappy, confused, and they'll probably leave and go somewhere else. Lessons learned get documented. It's important for you and the project team to capture the lessons learned. If you don't document them, you'll forget them. And if you forget them, you'll probably relive them someday. Third, the assets have value if they're documented. If you build a machine and no one can tell what that machine is or what it's supposed to do, and you, you get that thing halfway done, then it really has no value because someone else can't figure out what to do with it. But if you document what the machine is and you show a future user or future owner what the purpose was intended to, to be, then that asset has some value and perhaps it can be resold or repurposed. Restarting is much easier if there's a good closeout. And often the restart will be done by a different project team as we've seen with some of our projects that were worked on by a previous group, if they didn't do a good job of closing out their project, then it's very difficult to restart that project. You have to do a lot of rework on the project. The last one, and probably most important, is the greatest project outcome is not just the asset that you produced. The skilled project team is the greatest asset that we've produced. And does that make sense? Well, let's look at the projects we worked on. We had an olive press and our, our goal was to get that press uh, put together and get it running so that other students could use it. Well, that's, that's great, but that's not really what our program is about just to get a piece of machinery running. The greatest asset from our program is to teach people how to run projects, how to manage them, and in cases where the projects are closed, how to properly close the projects. Even though we didn't get these projects finished, we still built a valuable resource, and that's a group of people that know how to manage projects. Implementing project close down, getting delivery acceptance from the customer. Now well, that's more for a completed project. Shutting down resources and releasing them to new use. If you have a crew of people and your project finishes or gets canceled, you have to send that crew on to something new or release them. Third is, and this is very important, you have to evaluate the team, which includes yourself. You have to do an evaluation on how each person or each contractor performed, and you want to make some record of that so that you know in the future that when you have a certain type of project, you know who can do that type of work and who maybe is not so good at that type of work. You have to close your accounts and pay your bills, deliver the project to the customer, and you have to create a final report. Many of these for the senior project we don't obviously have to do, but we do have to do a final report. Here's an example outline for a final report. There's an executive summary and that could also be called an introduction. Your review and analysis, recommendations for a future similar project, your lessons learned, what went well, what didn't go so well, and any appendix material, any materials that, that should be part of the report, such as any drawings that you produced or list of equipment that were used. The retrospective can be somewhat challenging some organizations do a good job of it, 
and some don't handle it very well at all. A couple things that hinder it, lack of time to develop the lessons learned, no direction for the teams, and one really big one is lessons learned can sometimes be turned into a, a blame document or a blame session. And the idea of lessons learned is not to blame who did what wrong, but to look at what worked and what didn't work. So you're not looking to blame people, you're looking to assess processes and decide what worked and what didn't work. Some organizations just don't don't see the value in doing it. Lastly, there's some key terms that the textbook has provided for you. And here's the information on the textbook if you're interested in looking further into this topic. Thank you very much.